welcome to the celebration of Holy Mass here at St. Luke Catholic Church. Today is the 19th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our entrance antiphon is, Look to your covenant, O Lord, and forget not the life of your poor ones forever. Arise, O God, and defend our cause, and forget not the cries of those who seek you. If you wish to support our parish financially, please go to www.stlukechurchssj.org slash donate. You can mail a donation to the church or in-person drop off. Thank you for your continued support for our parish. May God reward you abundantly. Our celebrant today is Father Cornelius. He will be assisted by Deacon Walker. Let us now quiet ourselves as we welcome the Lord who is in our midst today. today in the first reading that the voice of the Lord was found in the quiet and in the, in the cool breeze. And the prophet was able to hear the Lord speak to him when he came out of his cave. In the gospel today, Jesus, the master healer himself, the master miracle walker, he will ask Peter to walk on water with him. And Peter indeed will begin to do great things. But as soon as he took his eyes off the prize, Peter began to sink. You and I, the moment we take our eyes off the Lord, we will begin to sink in our world. We will begin to sink. And so on this day, we pray in a special way for faith, that unmovable faith, that unshakable faith, faith that will help us realize everything that God is offering you and I today. 
And so as we pray for that strong faith in the Lord, we remember our brothers and sisters, the many people who have died in Beirut, in Lebanon, as a result of the blast. We pray for them, for the living and the thousands of people who are, whose lives have been destroyed, those who are sick and those who don't know where to turn to. Let us pray that all of us together will remain with the Lord and keep our eyes in the blessed God, our Father. Let us now begin our celebration in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. To prepare ourselves now to celebrate this sacred mystery worldly, let us pause for a moment, acknowledge our sinfulness, and ask God for his mercy and his peace. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, where you intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, everlasting God, whom by the Holy Spirit we dare to call our Father, bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who leads and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Kings. At the mountain of God, Horeb, Elijah came to a cave where he took shelter. Then the Lord said to him, Go outside and stand in the mountains before the Lord. The Lord will be passing by. A strong and heavy wind was rending the mountains and crashing rocks before the Lord but the Lord was not in the wind after the wind there was an earthquake but the Lord was not in the earthquake after the earthquake there was a fire but the Lord was not in the fire 
After the fire, there was a tiny whispering sound. When he heard this, Elijah hid his face in his cloak and went and stood at the entrance of the cave. The word of the Lord. from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I speak the truth in Christ. I do not lie. My conscience joins with the Holy Spirit in the bearing me witness that I have great sorrow and constant anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh, they are Israelites. Theirs, the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. They're the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, is in Christ, who is all over, God blessed forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thank you. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. After he had fed the people, Jesus made the disciples get into a boat and precede him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. After doing so, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When it was evening, he was there alone. Meanwhile, the boat, already a few miles offshore, was being tossed about by the waves, for the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, he came toward them walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. It is a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. At once, Jesus spoke to them. Take courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter said to him in reply, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, come. Peter got out of the boat and began to walk on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw how strong the wind was, he became frightened. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus stretched out his hand and caught Peter and said to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? After they got in the boat, the wind died down. Those who were in the boat did him homage, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I guess it's still morning. Good morning, brothers and sisters. <laughs> And I greet you on this 19th Sunday in Ordinary Time. And today's reflection will be focused on the first reading from the book, first book of Kings, chapter 19, verse 9a, and verses 11 through 13a. And on the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 14, verses 22 through 33. Both the first reading and the gospel deal with how we perceive our encounters with the Lord. And so I have chosen as the title of today's reflection, From a Whisper to a Scream, Encounters with the Lord are not always what they seem. In the first reading, we are told that the prophet Elijah took refuge in a cave. And the cave for him at that point being a safe place, a comfortable place, a shield from whatever turmoil may manifest itself outside. Elijah found his comfort zone, so to speak, to rest until the danger had passed. It would seem that no sooner had Elijah entered and settled in, he received a command from the Lord. The Lord said, go outside and stand on the mountain before the Lord. The Lord will be passing by. We are told of the conditions outside the cave. The cave in that small space that Elijah had found, that everything outside the cave was anything but hospitable, but in fact, 
everything going on outside the cave was life-threatening. We're told that a strong and heavy wind was rending the mountains and crashing rocks before the Lord. Now, brothers and sisters, I've seen some strong wind in my time. I've seen some hurricanes and things of the nature that did a lot of damage, but I have yet to see wind that was ripping apart mountains and crushing rocks before the Lord. And then it goes on, after the wind, there was an earthquake. Now, I used to be able to say that those of us here on the East Coast didn't know too much about earthquakes because earthquakes are usually reserved for that, that land out west, the land I call the land of shake and bake, which is California. But uh, after our little small brush with that earthquake, I dare say, especially for myself who had never been in an earthquake, uh, that was something different, new, but not exciting. And then it goes on to say that after the earthquake, there was fire. And now I, I would want to call to your attention that after the wind that was crushing rocks and the earthquake, that the fire was not a small campfire. That this must have been an all-consuming fire raging around through uh, the mountain on which Elijah was hiding out in his safe cave. Now, noting all these conditions, uh, Elijah perceived the Lord not to be present in any of these manifestations. But then, after the raging tumult, we were told, after the fire, there was a tiny whispering sound. And when he heard this, Elijah hid his face in his cloak and went and stood at the entrance of the cave. You see, Elijah's perception of the Lord's presence was a divine insight into the counterbalance to our human understanding of uncontrollable events in nature. And it's a fact that many people and cultures actually worshipped the elements. And they also assigned gods to be purveyors of that power that was generated in the earth and in the earthquakes and the wind and the fire. Even the Jewish people of the Old Testament viewed these things not so much as gods, but they viewed them as evidence of the power of God to exact retribution, vengeance, and punishment when the anger of the Lord was enkindled against his people. But they did not see it as evidence of the presence of the Lord himself. They were manifestations of the power and workings of the Lord. So, after the fire, the last of the raging elements had passed, we are told and reminded once again after the fire, there was this tiny whispering sound. And when Elijah heard it, he hid his face in his cloak and went and stood at the entrance of the cave for he had been told that the Lord would be passing by. <clears throat> you see, brothers and sisters, it was not the Lord's intention that Elijah should be injured or killed in his encounter with the Lord. Rather, that he be alive and well to receive whatever the Lord had intended for him. Yet you will notice, before he moved to the entrance of the cave, Elijah covered his face with his cloak. Now, it was understood by the Jewish people that no one could look upon the face of the Lord and live. And so Elijah knew this. So his act of covering his face was one of prudence. And as we've talked about before and Father explained to us, good old-fashioned fear of the Lord. 
in the here and now, as we shelter in the caves of our homes, there are many loud and boisterous voices screaming in proclamation of safety where there is no safety. Non-action, where there should be action, where even the most simple of actions can save many lives. Forcefully and with authority, they lie in the face of simple and verifiable truths. It's all going to go away. Don't worry about it. We've got it under control. Don't worry about it. It's all going to be all right. And then someone has the nerve to say, when faced with the 150,000 American citizens who have died, to say it is what it is. I used to use that term a lot, and I'm now trying very hard to erase it is what it is out of my vocabulary. <clears throat> and so, therefore, we're left to perceive, as Elijah did, as to whether the encounters we have in the media, in the presidential campaign, or in the science, by the way, the science which the Lord has revealed, that will make it safe for us to leave our caves as Elijah did when he recognized the Lord's presence. And although the circumstances were somewhat different, we can take a lesson from Elijah in that when he advanced to the entrance of the cave, he covered his face. Elijah put on his mask. Put on your mask. And let God's people say amen. amen. And so again, we have that whisper <clears throat> in Elijah that recognized the Lord. And the confusion today where we hear all these screams of lies and false information and false security. And even today, we still must encounter the Lord. And so I remind you once again of the theme, from a whisper to a scream, encounters with the Lord are not always as they seem. In Matthew's gospel, we're told of the encounter the disciples had with Jesus as he came to them walking on the water during the storm. In the preview to the encounter, which is one of the more demonstrative manifestations of Jesus' power, Jesus dispatched his disciples to go before him in a boat and go across the Sea of Galilee where he would meet them on the opposite shore. Now, now understand, brothers and sisters, this was no spur of the moment decision or happenstance uh, that Jesus did this. As we can see on other occasions, Jesus took the time to go off by himself to pray. We are told, after he fed the people, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. And when it was evening, he was there all alone. Jesus teaches a valuable and essential lesson here. In our efforts and dedication to helping and caring for those in need, and this is especially true for those of us who are caregivers, we must take time to be alone with ourselves and the Lord in prayer, lest we find ourselves unable to care for ourselves, let alone to care for others. The disciples did uh, what Jesus had directed, and we are told, meanwhile, the boat, already a few miles offshore, was being tossed about by the waves, for the wind was blowing against it. Remember, brothers and sisters, 
We're going to look at the people in the boat. You know, Peter was there, we know, and assuming his brothers and partners in business were there, and they were what? Fishermen. They were seasoned fishermen who knew the ways and the seamanship required to navigate the Sea of Galilee. They had sailed the Sea of Galilee fishing as their livelihood. So we can think and postulate that the others in the boat would have had some level of confidence in the people that were sailing the boat because the people that were sailing the boat were professional seamen. <coughs> However, something changed during the fourth watch of the night. Now, I'm, I'm not a seaman or a sailor, and I have no idea what time of night the fourth, fourth watch is, but I guess we can assume it was somewhere in the middle of the night or before dawn. We are told, when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. They didn't just cry out, they were yelling and screaming for their lives, let's keep it real. And we got to also look at that. Now, you know, they were yelling and screaming and crying out and screaming for their lives. But who was coming across the water to them? Jesus. Once again, remember, although they were in a storm and the sea was heavy, before they saw Jesus, there was no mention of fear and panic. But when they saw Jesus walking toward them on the water, fear and terror set in and they cried out. They screamed for their lives out of fear. Brothers and sisters, you know, how many times are we expectant of Jesus to come to our rescue? And he can come to our rescue in many ways. He can come by the Holy Spirit whispering in our ear. He can come through the counseling of clergy. He can come to conversations with good and trusted friends who you know have your best interests at heart. Jesus can come to us in many ways, but sometimes uh, are we like the disciples in the boat, the ones who already heard Jesus' message, who were there with him when he fed them 5,000 plus people, and now they're in the boat, and Jesus comes walking, and the first thing in their mind is, there's Jesus, oh God, help us, I'm scared to death. When Jesus comes to us sometimes, do we recognize him or are we afraid of the message that he's giving us? You know that old stand that the question people says, does God answer all prayers? And the answer is what? Yes, he does. God answers every prayer. When we put our trust in Jesus, he will do what he needs to do for us. But we have to understand, brothers and sisters, sometimes the answer is no or not yet. And so we have to, you know, recognize that when, when Jesus is coming to us, whether he's walking on water, walking down the street, hanging out in the kitchen, Wherever he comes to us, however the message is conveyed through whoever it is, are we going to recognize it and accept that this is him? You notice it was only when Jesus spoke, take courage. It is I. Do not be afraid that it seemed like they finally came to their senses. But now we need to talk about Peter. Okay? You know, Peter the Rock and all that. And, and, and more often than not, sometimes 
you know, Peter, instead of coming off like the rock, he kind of came off like loose, wet sand. And so now let's, let's, let's look at what happened now. Jesus is coming, walking on the water. Everybody panics and screams. Jesus says, it's I, do not be afraid. So it's him. He has spoken. And what does Peter say? Lord, if it's you, if it's you, command me to come to you on the water. Jesus must be very, very patient. And you know there's good news in that, because if he's that patient with Peter, he, we know he's patient with us. Because sometimes we can come up with some really stupid stuff for, for the Jesus to take care of. And let's, let's keep it real. We can. So Jesus tells him, come, come. And then we're told Peter got out of the boat and began to walk on the water toward Jesus. This man got out the boat, put his feet in the water, and was walking across the water toward Jesus. But when he saw how strong the wind was, he became what? Frightened. But, but, but what was happening? He was standing on the water. He asked Jesus to tell him to come. Jesus said, come. Jesus is standing there. And he starts to walk across the water. But the wind was blowing in his face. And he became frightened. Brothers and sisters, sometimes we, we're like that with our faith. We come to church every Sunday. We listen to the Gospels and the readings. We hear the sermon. We live our lives as best we can, following the way, the truth, and the light that is Jesus. But then sometimes when you get a little opposition, when somebody says something about our faith, or when we run into one of them little bumps, bruises, or roadblocks, you know, and, and, and we said, we, we, Jesus is with me, and then all of a sudden, there's the problem, there's the storm, and then we try to rationalize about whether we're going to be all right. A friend of mine, and I think he must have got this from somewhere, he said, you know, don't be wasting a whole lot of time <clears throat> telling God how big your problems are. Tell your problems how big your God is. And so again, <clears throat> the wind blew against his face. Peter jumped out. And because of that, he started to sink. And so what he said, Lord, save me. You know, I, 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 you told me to come. I asked you to tell me to come. You told me to come. I got out. I'm walking on the water and a little wind in my face, and now I'm scared. But you standing right there in front of me. Lord, save me. Aren't we glad that Jesus doesn't hold us liable for our own misunderstandings and sometimes stupidity? But there's another thing about Jesus when he reached out and pulled Peter up out the water. You know, sometimes, you know, people say, well, you know, I, I've kind of gone away from the church. I, 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 I've lost my way, and, you know, I've been asking to try to find my way back home and, 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 and things of that nature. But the, the bottom line is it doesn't matter how far away you have gone, but like Jesus looking at Peter's sink, you know, if you're not as close to the Lord as you used to be or you want to be or you think you should be, all you need to do is turn around. His hand is waiting to lift you up. How many times when the Lord tries to speak to us, do we not recognize his voice? Because there are times when the Lord speaks to us 
through our brothers and sisters, through our clergy, and yes, sometimes even through those people who do not mean us good. Sometimes bad people can be the source of a warning. Okay. Do we demand proof of his presence? Do we demand proof of his message? Do we demand proof of his caring? Brothers and sisters, there are times when, like Elijah and Peter, the Lord asks us to step out on faith and leave the comfort of our cave, the comfort of our own perceptions, the comfort of our own prejudices, the comfort of our own ways of doing things, our own fears, and in all of that, to trust that the message of the Lord, however we receive it, that message will be for our good. Paul tells us in his letter to the Romans, chapter 8, verse 28, we know that all things work for good for those who love God and who are called according to his purpose. And brothers and sisters, that does not mean all the good things. That means our troubles, our trials, our tribulations, our steps, our falls, all of those things. And you know, sometimes people go back to that old saying, whatever don't kill you, make you stronger. But the bottom line is, all of these things, these storms in our lives, all of these things will work together for our good if, if we hold on and we realize that all we have to do is turn around, stretch out your hand, and he will be there to take it. Whether he comes in the softness of a whisper or in the thunder, in the lightning. I remember when I was a little kid, my great-grandmother used to tell me when there was thunder and lightning, be quiet, because God is doing his work. But like we saw today, sometimes God comes in the quiet, in a whisper. Those quiet moments sometimes when we are alone with ourselves, when we have, like Jesus, gone off to pray and be alone with the Lord, Sometimes the word is a whisper, and sometimes it is a scream. When God has been trying to tell us something and we won't listen. And I always use myself as an example. When God was trying to tell me that I was doing too much work, I wasn't taking care of myself, I went, and I didn't listen, and so God's form of a scream was to pick up that two by four and knock me in the head and bring me to my senses and said, now enjoy that nervous breakdown. Okay, so we have to do that. And so anyway, we'll close again one more time with that topic. From a whisper to a scream, encounters with the Lord are not always what they seem. Amen. Let us rise as we profess our faith in God. For I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, 
and by the power of the Holy Holy Spirit, was was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became became man. man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he He suffered suffered death death and was buried, and rose rose again again on the third third day, day, in accordance accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My sisters and brothers, today's gospel reminds us that Jesus walked on water, that his apostles might recognize him as the Christ, and that they may believe. Confident that God hears every prayer that we offer to him, Let us now pray for ourselves and for those who have asked us for our prayers. Our response today is, Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, Lord, hear hear our prayer. For our church, that she may encourage all the faithful to remain strong and never falter, even when faced with stormy waters in our lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear Hear our prayers. prayers. Let us pray for those who have difficulty in accepting the invitation of Jesus to walk with him and accept his teachings. We pray that the Lord look kindly on them and through his Holy Spirit, bestow on them the great gift of faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We pray for the people of Beirut in Lebanon, and particularly for those injured and bereaved in this week's horrific explosions, that the grace of God be bestowed on them and give them consolation at at this time of great sorrow. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers as we prepare to celebrate the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin into Heaven next Saturday, a reward for her full acceptance of the will of the Father in accepting the motherhood of the Christ with its pain, suffering, and loss. We pray to the Lord that we too be given the grace to also accept the will of God in our lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those who are sick, that our merciful Lord will extend his healing hands upon them. For those who have died, that they may be received into eternity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We bow our heads and remember in silence our own personal intentions and the intentions of those who have asked for our prayers. Lord, hear our prayer. Give us, Lord our God, your saving help as we make our prayers with hope and confidence that you, our Father, will hear and answer us and lift us up when we begin to sing. Give us the grace to always trust in your care. For we make these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
pray, my sisters and brothers, that your sacrifice and mine will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifices for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his hosts. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love. His resurrection we confess with living faith, and His coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walks with us in the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst. When we are gathered by his love, and when as once for his disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessings, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. A mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the works of your love until he comes again. And we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. And grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. And so, having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity, so that together with Francis, our Pope, and Wilton, our Bishop, with all the bishops, priests, and deacons, and your entire people, 
as we walk your ways with faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with your apostles and martyrs, Saint Luke, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we will be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Let us now offer to each other a sign of peace with a bow.
shall cross the barren desert, but you shall not die of thirst. You shall wander far in safety, though you do not know. The bread that I will give, says the Lord, is my flesh for the life of the world. Let us pray. May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for a few minutes. On Wednesday, we will have a mass of Christian burial for our sister Priscilla M. Hicks. 
The viewing will begin at 10 o'clock, and the funeral mass will begin at uh, 7, uh, at 11 p.m., I'm sorry. We also have another uh, Christian burial for Chike Igwe Mbamalo. That will be on Saturday, but that will be Saturday evening. Um, he's one of our parishioners here who attends the Igbo Community Mass every month. So he died, and his body will be taken back to Nigeria for burial. So the Mass will be on Saturday evening, Saturday evening at 6.30 p.m. Please keep these grieving families in your prayers. I always uh, like to remind us about the census. Um, yes, the, trust me, the federal government is not paying me any money to do <laughs> this advertisement. But I think the census is very important because I know as a community leader in this Ward 7, I know how much we, members of the Ward 7, have suffered because 10 years ago, census was not adequately and properly done. And because it was not done well, 10 years ago, we are suffering today. That's why we don't have good grocery stores. Sometimes it takes a million years for them to fix the road. Because we don't have the allocations of federal fund that we are supposed to get because people were undercounted. Families were not counted, especially families who are not citizens. People were afraid to be counted because they, in their mind, were thinking that they would use that as a, as a way to get them. No. You don't have to express whether you are a U.S. citizen or not. So please, if you have family members, especially those who live in the District of Columbia, we really are suffering uh, uh, as a result of that. Please register all the members of your family, everybody living in your home. Make sure they are counted. Those living in Maryland, do the same. Those living in Virginia, do the same. Otherwise, the community you live in will suffer for another 10 years before another census will come. So please let us take it seriously, and you know you can uh, get counted by simply going to 2020census.gov, or by phone call, or by just returning the mail that has been sent to you. So just make sure we get this done. I know October will be here before you know it. So if you register now, you don't have to worry about the expiration date in October. So thank you for uh, your continued support. Uh, let us celebrate with our sisters and brothers who are uh, celebrating their birthday this weekend. Uh, Ms. Vonda Gale. Ms. Vonda Gale is celebrating. Uh, Vi Tinsley is also celebrating her birthday today. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, James E. Nelson III. James, one of our author servers, is also celebrating today. Charles A. Wilson is celebrating, Jr. Uh, Renee Johnson, Renee is celebrating as well. Uh, Jayla Neal, Jermaine Hamlin, and Patricia Davis. Anybody else? Mm -hmm. All right, let's sing for those celebrating their birthday. Happy birthday to you. birthday to all of you and we say may the joy of the Lord be your strength. Amen. Amen. Uh, finally, find us on Saturday is uh, Sunday. On Saturday is Sunday. No, I'm not drunk. It's the truth. On Saturday is the solemnity of 
and the assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary taking up body and soul into heaven because the Lord Jesus would not allow the blessed womb that bore him to see corruption on earth. So it's a beautiful and a big day for all of us. So we're going to have Mass on Saturday morning at 10 a.m. 10 a.m. Mass. And when I know some people come for the Saturday Vigil Mass, but it's different. Saturday Vigil Mass is different from the Solemnity of Assumption. So the Mass will be live streamed. If you are unable to come, just sit back and relax in a prayerful mood and watch the live stream of the Mass next Saturday, 10 a.m. And usually you will do your preparation, your nine days novena to, to prepare yourselves uh, for the Blessed Mother. So beginning from today, just, just offer at least, you know, one Hail Mary, one Glory Be, and one Our Father. Offer it for one intention from this day until Saturday. Just ask the Blessed Mother to intercede for you. Ask her for one, 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 one intention, not two. Ask the Blessed Mother to take your prayers to the heaven. She's not going to grant your prayer. She's not God, right? But she's the mother of God. She has the ability to take your prayers and give it to her son, who is God. That's what we do. That's what we honor the Blessed Mother. We don't worship her. So ask her this from today, Sunday to Saturday. Ask her for one gift. And every single day, just offer one Hail Mary, one Our Father, and one Glory Be for that particular intention. And watch the Blessed Mother walk. Because she says, nobody comes to her and leaves empty-handed. So let us continue to prepare ourselves for the beautiful assumption of the Blessed Mother on Saturday. And let us keep each other in our prayers. You know, pray for our sister church next door, Holy Comforters in Cyprian. Pray for them. It's been a difficult time for them. You know, but ask God to help. It could have been us. It could have been anybody. So, you know, but as your priest and as the deacon and as the ministers here, we take precaution. We try to do the best we can to make sure that you are safe. And if anything happens, it happens. It is the will of God. Isn't that what we pray? To? Jesus says, come. Right? I, I, he is the one who asks you to come to him. Right? Because if you come to him, you're going to hear his voice, like the prophet heard his voice in a silent wind that comes through. You hear the voice of the Lord. You know, I know sometimes we Catholics, we get knocked. Oh, you guys pray a certain way. Your prayers are always quiet. Yes, because we have read the scriptures and we understand that God can hear your prayers in a silent, in a silent wind. You don't need all the hoopra. It doesn't mean that God does not answer when we raise the roof. God answers in any way. We cannot dictate how God answers prayers. But God does answer. And we know that he answers in a silent voice. That's why Deacon reminded us that we must have faith. You must trust in him. You must put your faith in the Lord. Even as you walked into this church today. It is by faith. Because we walk by faith, not by sight. If we all walk by sight, we would not be here. If I had been walking by sight, I would not even want these doors open so that I can relax. But we walk by faith. So don't lose your faith. Let us be like, uh, you know, <laughs> the apostle Peter who started walking on the sea because he said, Jesus, can I do it? Jesus says, of course, come on. We are walking on the sea. Even though there is coronavirus on this side like a wave, there's poverty on this side. There's our jobs going on. There is the economy all around us. If you look at the sea and the waves around you, you will crumble and you will begin to sink. That's what Deacon reminded us today. You will sink. Fix your eyes on the price. That's why in, in the mystery of faith, what did we say in the mystery of faith? Save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. That's what we said. That's who will save us when we begin to drown. Savior of the world. So whenever you begin to drown, or you know somebody who is drowning in debt, who is drowning in alcoholism, in drugs, who drown in anything, remind them of the words that you heard today.
from the deacon and from the gospel. Lord, save me. And watch the Lord dip his hand and bring you out of whatever shackles we have found ourselves. Let us pray. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. May he let his face shine upon you and be merciful to you. Amen. May the Lord who has commanded us to walk on water like him, may he give us the grace never to turn back. That as we have decided to follow him, as we have decided to walk by faith, not by sight, that he may guide us both now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now may the blessings of the Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you both now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. Proclaiming the gospel by your life. Thanks, we. Have a blessed day. Please stay safe.
to my sorrow. So long, goodbye, coronavirus. So long, goodbye, coronavirus. Come on, so long, goodbye, coronavirus.